What's up guys, Logan here from the Motorcycle Forge and today we are back on to trying to cast a cylinder head in our garage. In the last video we got to do some casting and as you can see the moulds didn't come out exactly as uh, we hoped they would but we did learn a hell of a lot from them. So the next attempt for the casting, the sprue is more than double the size that should have a hell of a lot more oomph and more pressure to hopefully fill up the casting more completely. Now another thing that I had issues with in the last video was burnout. And pretty much the PLA, which I was using for printing the heads and making the molds and all that stuff, I was not able to burn it out completely without any residue and I was having to use compressed air, which was degrading the mold internally. So anyway, so I've printed out a polycast and this stuff should burn out cleanly and leave a nice empty mold. And the last thing I took away from the last video is heat, especially with um, preheating the molds. So the molds I need to be a lot hotter to help fill in the intricate parts on these cylinder heads and not have premature solidification because no one likes it when you're premature. Now that we've got this all printed, I just got two glue the cylinder head to it and then stick it in the mold. I'm going to skip all that stuff. I've done that like twice, three times now in the last videos. And a little bit of tinkering later, we have ourselves a three piece mold. So there's two pieces assembled. There's a wee bolt here. And then the last piece, that'll go on there with a little bit of tape and hold that in place while the investment cures. So fingers crossed, everything goes smoothly. All set for casting attempt number three. I have weighed out aluminium ready in the crucible and our mold is in the kiln and I've had that on for a couple hours so there's no chance it won't be up to temperature. It should be exactly where I want it. And we're approaching melting temperature. And so far so good. Now I do have a question. There's a blue flame coming out of the top of the furnace and it doesn't do this until about 440 degrees and then the flame goes from inside to outside. So yeah, if anyone knows, leave a comment down below and let me know. Right. That is very oh. oh no, knew I should have made it one piece. Wow, that did not go to plan, but anyway, I made the best of a bad situation. I decided to cast anyway when I'm not sure if there was any point in doing it, but I'm rather happy with how it came out. So you can see the difference in the surface finish. So that was the last one, and this is the one I just done. And a lot of parts of it in the lower half filled out quite well. Now, obviously it took me a reasonable amount of time to decide, fuck it, I will do the casting anyway and I lost temperature out of the, the molten metal, which was not good, and then without the extra height, the extra pressure, it just stood no chance of filling out completely. On to the next mold, let's make this super sturdy. So I've welded it together, I've braced it, I can pick it up by the top, nothing's gonna break, which is good. But the next problem was this one, I would got ready, I would burnt it out, I took it out of the kiln, and as you can see, there were some cracks in it, and one of the cracks, when I lifted it and put it upside down, a piece fell away, and you see into the mold, so that's no good. Now this was inside the sprue, that means that my 3D print had a couple holes in it, and the investment was able to get in through the holes and fill up the inside, which made this completely useless. I was gonna cast it despite this here, that's technically just an extra vent for the air to get out, but having that there also means that all the way down the bottom, the well, the gates, everything that feeds the mold is probably very similar to that. And you can hear, if you listen very carefully, heaps of stuff moving on the inside. So I think the heat cycle was too aggressive for this. I thought it was kind of cool. You can see the, the negative of the Jackson on the cylinder head outer. And yeah, as I suspected, the mold, it was blocked with uh, investment. So better safe than sorry and just bust it up and try again instead of wasting time and resources. And the next 3D print is in the flask and it is almost ready. So my plan is I'm gonna spot weld the plate that I cut out, which I have to remove to actually get the 3D print into the, the steel housing. All right, everything's ready to go. Let's light the film.
Well, that didn't go too bad. I'm relatively happy with that. There was a few things, obviously some aluminium came out of one of the vents, but that's good because it means that it was in there for, for a start. And the sprue and the basin, I think, were possibly too big for the size of the mold. I couldn't actually get it to be completely full. Other than that, not too bad. I'm gonna let it cool down and then we'll uh, take it apart. Hopefully, I'll come out there. Yes! It's so complete! Oh, that's just awesome. Right, now to get the rest of this crap off it. Right, now because this one is actually not crap, I will cut all the things off. Now the only thing left is the coolant jacket. I need to try get the investment out of there. So my plan is to use compressed air. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, huh. Now this is definitely the most successful failure so far. There's still surface imperfections, in particular a new problem, I don't know if you can see that, but you see these little balls that are on the surface, it's a lot like MIG welding splatter, that is from air bubbles. Now that means I need to build a vacuum chamber, now I've ordered a couple things already to build one, I just need to decide on what vacuum pump I'm going to get, a recommendation on a vacuum pump would be awesome. Now the second thing I learnt, heat. Now the difference between these two, this mold was a lot hotter, and that's why it looks like magnesium. The pore temperature was pretty similar. This would have been slightly colder because I was a bit of faffing around before I actually poured it because of the, the breaking uh, sprue, etc, etc. Now, the third thing that we learned, and this is the first time this has actually been visible because the mold was actually filled enough to shrink. So these ones here, I had feeder reservoirs on the top, but it didn't really matter because it wasn't even filled up, so we wouldn't even notice. But yeah, so I've got to add some reservoirs to this um, mold. Now another big difference between this one and the last one which we were going to cast was the mold. When I was burning it out and, well, curing it, I did this one much, much slower. I did this 100 degrees Celsius per hour. So it took about 8 hours. I got up to around 800 and then I cooled it back down to 600-ish, was which was the mold temperature for the casting. And one last thing I did differently between this one and the one that fell to bits and I didn't even cast, I burnt it out with everything facing the right way up instead of upside down like I've done for all the previous ones. Now, I don't know if that actually makes a difference or not, so if you're an expert in this, just let me know in the comments and that would be much appreciated. Now I really hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it and I'm just itching to do some more casting. I'm literally, as soon as I turn this off, I'm about to go do some more 3D printing and get the next ones underway. Now that will have to be for another video. So this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.